Um, so sorry, I was just trying to like focus on trying to do too, too many things at once. Good morning. Um, so I thought what I would do today is do a live. And what I'm going to be talking about is 12 uses for the Vesta Pack. I think a lot of times when people want to purchase the Vesta Pack, they think that um, they should, it's only for hiking or it's only for running. And I'm here to tell you guys that Vesta Pack is actually good for a lot of things. Today, I'm going to tell you 12 ways to use it in terms of being physically active. And then tomorrow I will do 12 more ways of using it in your everyday life. And so I want people to understand the high, Vesta Pack is a hydration vest. It was designed by and for bigger bodies so that we too can hydrate with ease while we're being physically active. And we have three sizes, earth, wind, and fire. And it goes all the way from extra large to eight X. But today I'm really gonna just focus on kind of talking about the 12 ways you can use it because I think a lot of times people think, oh my God, um, this is the only way I can use it and it's really not the only way you can use it. Um, and so let's just get started. Let's get started. Hang on, let me see if I can do something with this um, this thing I have here. It's not really letting me do anything. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, so let's just talk about the 12 ways. They're all up on the screen. I could just talk about them. I had some images to go with this, but that's okay. Um, we live, we learn, and we grow. Okay, walking. Yes, of course. Anybody that goes walking definitely can use a Vesta pack. And I think a lot of times when we think about walking, we think about being physically active walking. And I'm here to tell you that you don't even have to be doing exercise walking. You could be walking around your house. You could be doing gardening. You could be walking your dog. You could be walking to the corner store. You could be just walking um, at an event, uh, maybe going shopping. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but this summer has been super, super hot. The last few summers have been super, super hot. And so, you know, we do a lot of walking, whether it's walking at work or whatever, um, we still need to stay hydrated. And a lot of times when we're doing walking, we think because it's just a short distance that um, we don't necessarily need to hydrate or we'll just carry around our water bottles, um, which of course is an option. But I'm saying that you could also use Vestapak. <laughs> And it can make, just make it easier for you because it's hands-free, right? The vest is on your body. It's super comfortable. You barely know it's there. But then you have this water bladder that has a hose attached to it that allows you to easily access that water by just grabbing onto the hose and biting down on the bite valve. And next thing you know, you're hydrated. And so, yeah, I just think that I want us to kind of continue to think about whether or not you buy a Vesta pack or not, to really think about how we can integrate these packs, these hydration tools into our lives, right? Because we do need to hydrate. You know, the statistics say that 70% of us are in a state of chronic dehydration. And so being dehydrated is definitely an issue for us. And so how do we combat that? And I think one of the ways we could do that is by using Vesta pack because it is super, it's like a piece of clothing. It's like a jacket, you know what I mean? Or a sweater or a lightweight vest. It's just not, it's super light. It's less than a pound. Um, the water, of course, weighs, weighs, the weight comes from the water and the water in the water bladder. But other than that, nothing else is really heavy. And what I also like about Vesta Pack is that it has these spacious pockets in the front and a big old pocket in the back that allows you to put as much stuff as you want in there, right? Um, your phone, your glasses, maybe some sunscreen, whatever the case may be in terms of what you need, you can easily slip it into your pockets and then go about your business. Um, like if, even at work, I use it at work. So sometimes I have to walk across campus and I got to carry some paperwork with me or something else. I can just slip on my Vesta pack, put my phone, my keys, my glasses, my um, notepad, a little notepad that I usually carry around in my vest. Um, I'm, I can hydrate on the way when I'm walking across campus, but I can continue to have, use my hands to carry other things. So that's what really super cool about it is that Vesta Pack allows you to be hands-free with your hydration. You don't have to worry about carrying a water bottle, figuring out what to do with it, <laughs> trying to remember not to forget it. Lord knows how many water bottles I have forgotten. And um, even when I worked on campus, our office, we just always had a collection of water bottles that people had left behind. So I know that they get left behind. All right, so the second thing we're gonna talk about is running so yes i say in my you know in my opening that look vesta pack 
there's so many different uses for Vestapak, but that most people really usually um, identify Vestapak, hydration vest and hydration packs with running or hiking. And I'm here to say that, yes, those are definitely activities that you would want to use a, a hydration vest for. Again, it allows you to do this act, your physical activities hands-free. You could pack everything in your vest when you go for your run or if you go for a day hike or a short hike. Um, and then also you you're have the capacity to be able to hydrate yourself without having to carry around, again, those water bottles that can be cumbersome and also just hard to figure out what to do with, where to put and then also, you know, you don't want to leave it behind because a lot of times these water bottles cost, you know, a pretty penny. And so <laughs> Lord knows I have I have lost really expensive water bottles. And there are times when I've seen water bo- expensive water bottles in lost and founds. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm not the only one that does it. So yes, running, of course. I want to talk about rock climbing because I think we don't think of rock climbing as this... Um, I don't know, (sighs) place, activity where we would need a hydration vest. And I'm here to tell you as someone who rock climbs, I'm in the dead, I'm like the sun is beaming right down on me. Like the sun is beaming down on the mountains and the rocks that I'm climbing on, right? It's still, if I'm going to be climbing those things, of course, (laughs) the sun is going to be beaming down on me. And I think in many ways, this is a subtlety of um, dehydration in that, and especially in Arizona where we have dry heat, you may not sweat a lot, but because of the heat, you know, it will suck the water out of you and you can easily become dehydrated. It'll sneak up on you. Next thing you know, you're just like, why do I feel horrible, awful? It's because you're dehydrated. And that's what happens to rock climbing. And it's so funny. I went rock climbing with some, with a group of, uh, with a group, a rock climbing group. And it was just so interesting how we would do all this rock climbing, right, for like, you know, an hour or so. And then all of a sudden we would have to find maybe a little cave, <laughs> a little hole in the, in, the, in the wall where we could rest. And people just spent so much time like hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. And my thing is that, and because not only did they need to hydrate, but also because they were dehydrated. So they really just didn't have the physical capacity to continue to do rock climbing. My thing is that maybe we could do more rock climbing on a continuous basis, right? If we wore the hydration vest and then we could be dehydration all along. And so I did wear mine and people were like, oh my God, I never thought to wear, you know, hydration pack or vest. I'm like, yeah, if you need to hydrate, you just wear, (laughs) you wear what you need. And for me, it was just like really one of those um, breakthrough moments when I was like, yeah, you know, we, there needs to be this expansive look at, hydration and this expansive look at hydration tools and also the expansion of wearing a pack or a vest pretty much all day long on for all of our activities. I have gotten to the point now where I am starting to wear my vest all the time because I realize, wow, it's just so convenient um, for me and um, it makes sense. And then also, you know, I say to people, the reason why I want to tell you these 12 ways to use it and then tomorrow I'll do 12 more ways you can use Vestapak is that people, you know, say, oh, well, they're so pricey, you know. Um, yeah, but they're multifunctional. They're long lasting. So it's not like fast fashion. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a gear. It's a tool for you to use in your day to day life for all the different activities that go on. Because you need hydration throughout the day. It's not like you only need a hydration in the morning or at night or in the afternoon. You need it all day long, every day. And you probably could go to sleep in um, Vestapak, but um, I'm not recommending that. But I thought I mentioned it. Okay, high-intensity interval workouts. Yes, I have used my vest during my high-intensity interval workouts. I go to a class once a week. And even there, people are like, oh my God, you're right. I should get me a vest and I should be wearing it. <laughs> I do think that. Um, the way the vest is designed, most people's apprehension to wearing the vest is that they thought it was going to move around. Well, the way the vest is designed, it's, it's like a vest. So if it's like a nice, I would tell people, I would say if it's like a sports shirt or bra, more, just slightly more looser. Um, so it doesn't really move around. Um, and, and the water bladder in the back of it, it does not slush around either because I work with a company and their water bladders are designed to not flush around. So it's not like you're going to run into that issue. Um, and so 
you know, having that with me, because a lot of times you'll be doing your high intensity interval workouts and you'll get to maybe some section and you're like super tired. And <laughs> it's like, you can't even catch your breath hardly. And the last thing you want to do is get up and try to walk all the way across the room and go get your water bottle. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, and I found that by having my vest on, I could just hydrate in those moments when I'm just super tired, can't move, can't breathe, don't want to do nothing else. Um, it's been such a lifesaver. And so, yeah. Um, so this next one I want to talk about is water sports. I think a lot of times with water sports, I feel like as, as a humans, we dis. There's this dissociation that happens when we're doing water sports. We think that because we're surrounded by a lot of water that we don't need any water. And I'm here to tell you, yes, we're surrounded by a lot of water, but that water is outside of you. It's not inside of you. <laughs> so hydration still is important when you're doing your water activities. You know, not when you're submerged in water. I cannot say that Vestapak will work when you're submerged in water. No, I doubt it. Mm -mm, don't do it. Anyways, but if you're on top of water, on the water, Yes, feel free to use it. Like for kayaking, I use it for paddle boarding, kayaking, rowing. If I was in a sailboat, I haven't been in a sailboat, so I can't say. But if I was, I would wear my vest to pack. Um, if I was surfing, um, I haven't surfed in a while, but I keep saying that when I do get ready to go back surfing again, I'm going to wear my hat vest to pack. Um, what else? Just any kind of water activity where you're on top of the water. And you're going to be out in the hot, scorching sun. It's kind of like rock climbing. We just forget, like, just because you're surrounded by water does not mean that you're intaking the water. And we think when we're participating in these water sports that somehow we don't need to hydrate. My thing is that you're in, you're in, you're in the water, which means you're exposed to the sun at the highest level, right? The sun can beam down on you. There's very, there's little to no shade. So therefore you are the heat and the sun is going to be extracting water from your body and you're going to become dehydrated. So make it your business to make sure that you even wear a vest pack or a hydration pack or vest, whatever the case may be, um, when you're, when you're doing your water activities, because th that's all, you know, you need it then too. The next one is cycling, which I think is my favorite one because y'all know that the guy who, um, created Camelback. He, ooh, ooh, oh, okay. Oops, sorry about that. Um, the guy that created Camelback, he created it because he was doing a hundred mile bike event. And I find it interesting that in the cycling community, you don't really see a lot of people wearing, um, hydration packs or vest. Um, you'll see people here and there. Um, but for the most part, particularly for road, road cycling, you never see people wearing hydration vests. And I think it's, I think it's because they think it's heavy. Mine says ultra light. I think they also think that it's going to impair their speed, which it doesn't. And, um, I just think that a lot of times in these kind of communities, I think sporting communities, there's this culture of how things are done. And you know, humans, we don't like to change, but I'm here to say that I'm ready to disrupt the whole sporting industry and say, look, you guys, everybody needs to hydrate and everybody needs to be wearing a hydration vest and vest to pack it if you can't, <laughs> particularly for those of us in bigger bodies, right? Um, because our hydration issues are, you know, can be like, for me, I sweat a lot. Um, and it, and it stands to reason that I might sweat a little bit more than a smaller person because I have more body surface area. So there's more chances for water to leak out. So therefore, of course, the amount is going to be greater. Um, and so I just say for any type of cycling that you do, that you should wear a pack. And so I think that is, um, you know, I just think it's interesting that the pack, you know, the whole hydration pack concept came through the cycling, but yet cyclists are, I, I see very few cyclists wearing it. So I really think there should be a return in the spirit and in the memory of the guy who created Camelback. Um, that we should return to wearing our hydration, wearable hydration when we're cycling. All right. The next thing is CrossFit, which is really just like the high intensity interval workout. Um, you know, you can wear it during there. Um, when I do some wads, I do a wad probably once a week, sometimes twice a week. And I really find that even when I, like I'm jumping up on the um, box, <laughs> so I don't have no issues with the pack. It may shift a little bit very, very minuscule. It's like my shirt shifting, um, nothing major. And I love just having access to water very easily when I'm doing my, um, CrossFit activities. Um, because a lot of times that 
those kinds of exercises really can take you out. Uh, you become super tired and exhausted and out of breath and having to kind of stop doing something and go get water and then come back. Um, for me, I, I, I like to get her done. As I said, I like to get her done and I don't like to keep stopping. And so for me, having my vest has been a lifesaver because I could just do my workout, do everything I need to do. And I think also too, in terms of me getting the maximum amount of impact from doing CrossFit, um, has increased because I do, I do wear my vest and I have, I don't have to keep stopping, um, to hydrate. All right. And so then this next one is hiking. Of course, as we always know, hiking, and I will say this about Vestapack, you can use it for hiking. It is not designed for long hikes. Um, it really is designed for short hikes. Um, like a day long hike perhaps, or even just, you know, maybe you just go out for a hike for the morning or afternoon or evening. Um, and so it's not really for long hikes, but, um, when you're out there in the heat hiking, you know, just having access to the, um, having Vesta pack and having your hydration easily accessible really is nice and convenient. Um, I see a lot of people on the trails and they'd be carrying around these big water bottles and I'm just thinking, Oh my God, you guys, you guys need a pack or you need a vest. But I think a lot of times people don't think to buy a pack or a vest because maybe they're just going hiking. Maybe it's just, um, like I live in Arizona, so it's very touristy. So people come, they do the trail. That's the only time they're ever going to do the trail, um, maybe in life. Um, and so they just don't see any need to make an investment in something like that. But also I still say that it's still uncomfortable. I mean, like you're carrying around a water bottle, you, you know, yeah. So yeah, for hiking and I, and I, and I, so this is a good point. So yeah, you're a tourist, you're in Arizona. You really do need a hydration pack or vest. And you say, well, I'm not going to be hiking again, but my thing, that's the reason why I'm doing these two videos talking about the ways to use Vestapack because you're not just going to use it for hiking, but it'll be, but if you buy it, then you'll have it. And so when you do go hiking once a year and once every, whenever, a couple times a year, um, or once every three years <laughs> or whatever, or once in life, it'll be available to you. But the Vestapack doesn't have to sit around waiting for you to hike. You can use it for running. You can use it for walking. You can use it for your exercise routines. You can use it when you go biking. You can use it for this next category, winter sports. You can put it over your coat. So when you're skiing, paddle boarding, snow sledding, sledding. Um, I love sledding um, in the winter. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so, um, yeah, like it is something you can use for all, uh, what is it? Um, snowboarding. Um, snowmobiling, um, again, I think because we think the weather is cold also because we think we're around snow, which translates to kind of, um, association with water that we don't need to hydrate. No, you still need to hydrate. And again, the same way he can suck the, suck the energy out of you and suck the, <laughs> make you dehydrate it. So can cold weather. In fact, they say cold weather might even be worse than heat. Um, because it's subtle and it sneaks up on you and you're just like, oh my God, next thing you know, you're dehydrated and you don't understand why and you're cold and you know, yeah, because it's the elements of the weather that make us, that can suck the energy out of us, but also make us dehydrated. So winter sports is one of those ones where people don't think, what? I wear a pack. Yeah, you wear a pack for winter sports. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. This next category I'm going to talk about is, um, duathlon. And, and tri triathlons and Ironmans. You, of course, you can't wear it while you're swimming. However, you can wear it for the bike and the running section. And why not? Why not make your life convenient? <laughs> I did triathlon. I wore my vest once I got out of the water. I got on that bike. I put on my vest and I didn't take it off till I crossed the finish line. So therefore, you know, it is. And if you're doing a duathlon where, you know, depending on which two activities you're doing it with, you, you definitely would use a vest pack for one of those, um, activities. And so definitely is a great thing to use, um, the vest pack for the next one is one that I just recently kind of, um, learned about. <clears throat> I went golfing about a month ago. I went to a, yeah, I went golfing for about a month ago. I was supposed to go for an event, but I didn't go for the event. So I ended up just going with, um, this group of ladies and we went golfing. So, and I wore my vest pack. And I think it was the best thing that could ever happen to me because as I was on the golf course, people were like, what's that thing you're wearing? <laughs> so I told them what it was. 
And I told them that I made it and all that kind of stuff. And then people had a lot of questions. And we're like, well, why would I want to wear that? And, and then I, I had people put it on, especially guys. Well, mostly guys. <laughs> They've tried it on. They saw how lightweight it was. They saw how convenient it could be. They saw that the vest did not interfere with their golfing. Um, and they just saw it as, you know, just another kind of piece of clothing on. Um, and I think what I realized that day when I was at the golf course is that, as I realized in other places, is that we have, a, as humans, we have so many cultural traditions, right? Around different activities. I mentioned this before. And we have a tendency to want to just, um, what should I say? Not change. Think that um, just because you use something for something else, you can't use it for another sporting event. And I'm here to say that, why not? How cool would it be to see golfers the reason why they go out early in the morning is because they're scared of the sun and getting <laughs> dehydrated. Um, why not wear a vest or pack while you're golfing? Because it doesn't interfere with your golfing. You know what I mean? Um, unless you got a lot of stuff packed in the front, probably front pockets. Yeah, that could possibly. But my thing is you can put everything in the back. So it's not like really um, you have to worry about it disrupting you. But I did discover that day is that I would say, you know, 90% of people's apprehension about using the Vesta pack while golfing um, was dismantled and I was able to allow them to see, no, it really can be effective and can really work for them. I think there's some things that some people are just not going to like, they don't want to budge on. So, you know, I, I, I'm not going to defend those things because I don't, I don't have the capacity to. But I think what's really interesting is that what I've discovered is that, wow, this vest, I thought it was just a hydration vest. Uh, for people just to be physically active with, but I'm really seeing that it has wide range implications and it has challenged me to think about, well, then how do I um, navigate or um, instigate or implement change in our culture so that people become, we become the kind of people that wear hydration vest all day long. So anyways, the last um, category is called fishing and it is, um, one of those ones, again, it's kind of like a water activity um, because you're around the water and I think there's always this misnomer when you're around the water that somehow you're <laughs> you're not gonna be, you know, dehydrated. Um, but I just think that fishing, I think, think, I think people are like, um, I just, like I run a lot and I bike a lot and so I, I, I come a lot, come across a lot of body waters, what, bodies of water and I see people fishing and doing all kind of stuff. And again, I see them with these big thermos and coolers trying to stay hydrated. And I said, what if I could integrate like vest pack into a fishing vest, right? You can still have all your little fishing stuff, but then also, you know, the, um, water bladder can be built into it because I can see how I know it's like a very, um, you're not moving around a lot. But I, but I gotta remind people that when you're outside and when you're in the elements, you continue to need to hydrate. Um, some of those people are out there and they're out in the dead of the sun. So I'm like, yeah, a lot of times do people do do it early morning? Yes, I know, I know that. Uh, but I still contend that hydration is something you need to be doing all day long. Obviously, because even fish, even people that are going fishing still bring things to hydrate. So they do feel this need to hydrate. But how can we make it simpler and more easier? And so I was thinking about that as I was running past a whole bunch of runners the other day that um, I was running past a whole bunch of people fishing. <laughs> yes, I was passing runners. But I, <laughs> the point of this is that you know, I'm thinking that, you know, even I think people that go fishing could stand to um, wear, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I'm like looking at something, um, Can people that go fishing could benefit from using um, the best pack. All right, in closing, I want to say this. There are these are the, look, let me say this about the features about Vestapak, because I think that will kind of hone in on why I'm recommending this. And I wish I could slow you guys my slides, but I've, I'm using this new program and I don't know how to use it, but maybe I will figure out how to use it. And then next time I'll, I'll do better. So this is the features of Vestapak and why 
you can use it for all these different activities. It's bounce-free design, meaning it's not going to bounce around. The water's not going to bounce around. The water bladder, neither is the vest. It's fitted like a sports bra or a sports shirt, right? So that's why it's super comfortable, super light. Anyways, quick access to pockets. When you need things, right, you can put those things in your pocket and you don't have to worry about, you can carry everything you need, but then you don't have to carry your water bottle, right? <laughs> and you can have quick access to your phone or your keys or your glasses or, you know, sunscreen, whatever it is you want to kind of carry you around when you're being physically active, that stuff will be easily accessible and you don't have to carry it in your hands. And then the hydration compatibility is I say this, first of all, you can use any kind of water bladder in there. And also it's designed in such a way that the front pockets can hold those large 24 ounce plastic water bottles. So let's say you don't want to use a water bladder one day. You just want to use one water bottle because you know, maybe got something special in there that you want to drink and that's your business. <laughs> And I'm cool with that. Um, maybe that's all you want to carry for the day, right? Because you're just going to go for a short run, then you're going to go walking, and then maybe you're going to go sit, you know, sit along, sit along the ocean, or do whatever you're going to do, right? And you just want one water bottle. What's nice about Best Pack is that you could pack some things that you need, right, to go to the beach, put that one water bottle in there, and you're on. You're so it's multifunctional. Multi, you can use it for multi things, and you can use it in multiple different kinds of ways. Also has a weather resistant material. It's super, it's, it's 100% waterproof meaning, and also has a waterproof zipper on the back there. So anything that you put in that back pouch, no water's going in and ain't no water coming out, which I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's waterproof. <laughs> Again, this lightweight const construction is super light. Y'all it weighs less. It's like nine ounces. Um, it is just, it's like the equivalent of two having on two t-shirts. And so it's super light. You're, you're, I tell people it like, if it, it, it fits like apparel, but performs like gear, you are barely going to even know that you have it on. Once you have it on, you're going to forget that you have it on because it's so comfortable and it's so ultra light. The thing that weighs something is the water. Um, and I can't do anything about <laughs> the weight of water. It is what it is. But you'll have that water available to you. You can easily access it and you can stay hydrated. Also, the next thing I want to say is that it has a breathable design. Inside of the vest is what we call perforated mesh made out of neoprene. If you know anything about neoprene, it's used for wetsuits. It's designed to keep you warm in cool environments, but it's also, neoprene has a dual function. It also keeps you warm, <clears throat> I mean cool in um, hot environments. So it has a dual function and it's doing the same thing in the vest. And it's all on the back and all on the front panels. So you're completely covered with that breathable, um, as well as moisture wicking, as well as neoprene textile that helps keep you warm when you, when you need, when it's cold outside and help keep you cool when it's hot outside. Um, I just said that backwards. It helps keep you warm when it's cold outside and help keeps you cool when it's hot outside. Okay. I think I got that right this time. The beautiful thing about Vesta Pack is that it has an adjustable fit, meaning that it will fit your body um, however you want to. Those buckles in the front can not only move up and down, but they can move in and out. And then for size earth, there is an elastic um, adjustable strand um, um, webbing on the side where you can adjust it so you can make it small or large. I know for a lot of people... And the reason why I did that on size earth is because a lot of people, I think our sizing system is so inconsistent. So a lot of times people think, oh, I must be extra large when they're really more large. And so a lot of times they'll get the vest and it's really too big for them. And so I've added this feature so that if you are on that between large and extra large, I don't know, spectrum of sizes, which I totally hate. <clears throat> That's why I call it earth. Um, <laughs> you're a size earth because you're an element of the environment. Anyways, um, you can adjust it and so it'll fit you and so it'll fit you comfortably and you don't have to worry about um, whether, you know, it just will fit you comfortably and the fit is adjusted. I don't know about you. Some days I'm a little bigger, some days I'm a little smaller. So I love that you can wear the vest long term and that it will adjust to your body whenever. And it, and the, uh, the adjustment is also about whether you want to wear it without clothing with light clothing, or if you want to wear it over your snowsuit, I want you to have the capacity to be able to wear this year round. So that's what all the adjustable fit is. Yes, we're going to be adding some more adjustments to it in our next iteration, 
But for now, it's really it's really good in terms of adjustment. And then finally, reflector elements. There's a reflector elements on the front and reflector elements on the back. And those are designed so that if you're out at night, you're walking, running, hiking, whatever, that if somebody has a light on, it will reflect and they will know, oh my God, there's a human. <laughs> there's a person in front of me. Don't run them over. So you'll have that added feature. It'll keep you protected, hopefully, um, at night um, from people, cars, and animals. Um, and those are the features. And so I just wanted to come on, jump on today. I've already been on a long time, um, <laughs> almost 30 minutes now. But I just want to say that, look, I think we think of Vesta Pack as a thing for only running and hiking. It is not, y'all. You can use it for walking. You can use it for rock climbing. You can use it for your day-to-day -day physical exercise. You can use it around the house, quite honestly, but you can use it for all these other different things. You can use it when you're doing your water sports, your CrossFit, your, your winter sports, your duathlons, your golfing, for crying out loud. As I told you guys, like I just discovered a month ago that really I went and wore it to, when I went golfing and it worked. Um, or if you're just going fishing, if you're just hanging out, chilling next to a body of water, just fishing, Vestapack can be your hydration partner and help you stay hydrated, hands-free, right? Convenient and so easy. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any other questions about Vestapack, feel free to put them in the comment section or whatever that section is below. <laughs> also, I wanted to announce that we are having a sale on Vestapack starting November 26th through December 2nd. Um, a donor has come in and said they will contribute $50 towards <clears throat> $50 each for each vest that I sell up to 250 vests. So if you ever thought about buying the vest and you're like, oh, it's a little pricey, Charlotte, that's the time to come get it between November 26th and December 2nd. Be one of the first 250 people to get it because um, then that sale will go away or it will stay. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. Um, but if you're definitely interested, make sure you come back on November 26th and check us out. And thank you again for tuning in. Peace and love, guys. Have a beautiful, whatever, this is Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Monday. I know a lot of people often work. Please self-care. Please do something good for you. And I'll see you next time. All right now. I'll see y'all guys. I'll see you guys outdoors. Peace and love.